here, by the way, and so and I bring greetings to you from Bishop Lindsay Davis, who is um, just thrilled with how you all are doing these days and the growth and the joy that is here. So I, I offer you his greetings as well. Um, this morning, I'm going to be reading from Matthew chapter 23. And I don't walk around quite as much as Drew does. I walk a little bit. Um, you might have to like kind of sit a little stiller this morning. <laughs> Chapter 23 of Matthew, I'll be reading verses 1 through 6, and then I'm going to jump over and pick up verses 23 through 25. Uh, you will recognize this as Jesus talking to the crowds, but also talking to the scribes and the Pharisees. And I invite you to listen for the word of God. Then Jesus said to the crowds and his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Therefore... Do whatever they teach you and follow it, but do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens hard to bear and lay them on the shoulders of others, but they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have a place of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues. And then Jesus says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you tithe mint, dill, cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters, justice, mercy, and faith. It is these you ought to have practiced without neglecting the others. You blind guides, you strain out a gnat, but you swallow a camel. As difficult as these are, these are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. These are difficult words, holy God, but we know that you love us. We know that there is a message here for us, and we pray now that we will be able to receive that message. So take me out of it. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you who we know as our strength and redeemer. Amen. Mm -hmm. I have this theory that sometimes we have a tendency as human beings, just a tendency as human beings, to focus on what's right in front of us and kind of neglect the bigger picture. Uh, you've heard the, the saying, she missed the forest for the trees. And that's what that means. She was so focused on all the trees that she missed the bigger picture of the forest. We have a tendency to miss the big picture. And I think that we do that as humans sometimes too. And I have some examples, and uh, Vanna <laughs> is going to help me this morning. Um, I want to show you, <laughs> I want to show you some examples, one at a time, of things that are up close that people have seen up close, and that looking at them so up close, they've not been able to see the bigger picture of what the object really is. So see if you can guess what this first object is. Isn't he doing a Kathleen job? <laughs> <laughs> That's an object of something taken up close, a picture taken up close. Anybody want to take a guess at what that is in the bigger picture? Okay, he's taking too long. That is, <laughs> that's actually the, a picture of a paper towel. Oh. I did. Did you get that one? Okay. I did. I thought okay. paper towel. The next one. <laughs> I'll walk faster this time, I swear. Yeah, I see what it is, too. Can I see it? Okay, thanks. <laughs> Anybody want to holler at a guess at what you think that might be? That's a little bit more complicated. But again, it's a picture of something up close. So it's hard to see the big picture. Okay. That one's in blue, so it's trickier. But it's actually a paper towel roll, and then it's surrounded by a, a magazine. So it's just circles of paper towel in the middle and the magazine pages. Okay, the third one. Okay. <laughs> Surely somebody can guess this one. Actually, I think it's the hardest one. Everyone's scared to even say it. <laughs> well, I can tell you, this is my uh, uh, sixth charge conference, and no one has gotten that one. <laughs> so, that is the end of a phone cord, the little phone cord that you plug into 
through the phone. Oh my God. And the last so one, the big finale, my favorite. <laughs> Somebody can guess that one. <laughs>
dangerous trap for the church. There's a guy named Brian McLaren who wrote a book several years ago now called um, Generous Orthodoxy. And in that book, Brian McLaren says, Jesus didn't come to start a religion. Jesus didn't come to make an institution. Jesus didn't even show up here to start a bunch of little churches across the countryside. Jesus came to teach us another way, a better way of having a relationship with God. That's what Jesus was about, and that's what the big picture is about. That's the big picture for the church as well. The United Methodist Church has a mission statement to try to help us focus on what the big picture is. And does anybody know what the United Methodist Church's mission statement is? <laughs> okay, I'll tell you. The mission of the United Methodist Church as an entire denomination is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. That's it. That's the mission of the United Methodist Church, to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And if the church is not doing that, if we are not out there making disciples for Jesus, then we do run the risk of chasing after butterflies and of allowing things to die. And that is a very dangerous trap. And I have another theory. I think that sometimes uh, pastors, myself included, have a tendency to preach to ourselves. And so whenever you hear Pastor Drew up here preaching a message, you can probably guess that he's talking to himself as well. And that's the case here for me, because having been a district superintendent now for a little over a year, I see the danger of focusing in on things like maintenance and making sure the administration is all together and just doing paperwork. There's a huge danger in that. I don't want that to be my mission. That's not my mission. And that's not the mission of Carrollton. It's not the mission of the Frankfurt District. Our mission is to make disciples. Our mission is bigger than that. Our focus is on being out there, reaching people for Jesus Christ, for fishing for people, and for introducing them to what we have in our hearts. That's what our mission is. I have two questions that I'm going to ask every church in the Frankfurt District during this round of charge conferences. I can't answer these questions for you, but I do want to ask you to take them seriously and to answer them for yourselves. To find out if you all are a church focused on the big picture or on navel gazing. And the first question is simple. It's this one. Is, is Carrollton United Methodist Church focused on maintenance, or is it focused on mission? And as a matter of fact, I believe that Drew asked that question in his pastor's report for the charge conference. Are we focused on maintenance or mission? And then the second question is pretty simple as well. Is Carrollton United Methodist Church transforming the world for Jesus Christ? Another way to ask that question is the age-old question that, that all churches should ask of ourselves, and, and that is, if Carrollton United Methodist Church were to just poof, disappear from this place, in this town, would anybody other than the people in this room care? So those are the two questions I want to ask every church. The 2011 Census Bureau came out not too long ago, and that's, you know, statistics ending in 2011, so it's a little bit behind the time, but it is pretty accurate. In Kentucky, there are 4,369,356 people. So there are well over 4 million people living in Kentucky. But only a little over half of them, 53%, claim to be active Christians. That means over 2 million people in Kentucky are not Christian. Some of them have other faiths, but some of them don't. They are just not connected to God in any way, shape, or form. Two million people. I also know by your pastor's end of the year reports that there are 151,585 United Methodists in the state of Kentucky in our annual conference. We have a long way to go, and there is a huge mission field out there. There's a lot of reasons to go fishing for Jesus Christ. 
our mission is clear and it is big and I want to know how we're doing with it. I know for myself, I don't want to waste time chasing butterflies. And don't get me wrong, butterflies are beautiful. Sometimes buildings are beautiful and, and, and wonderful and sometimes things that are close to us are very important. But I don't want to take all of my time chasing butterflies and allowing people in gulches to die. But before I can do that, I know that I have to be a disciple myself. Before I can go out and make disciples, I have to make sure that I'm a disciple too. And it makes sense. Some of you have um, animals living around. You can't have a horse birth a cow. <laughs> you have to have a horse birth a horse and a cow birth a cow. You have to have a disciple to make a disciple. If you're gonna go out and make disciples, you need to know what it is you're making. So we have to be disciples ourselves first. And so I want to ask those two questions of myself as well. Is my faith in maintenance mode or is it in mission mode? And am I helping to transform the world for Jesus Christ? If I'm not, I'm chasing butterflies. So there are things that we can do to make sure that we are forming ourselves as disciples. Regular accountability, regular study. And there are things that the, the conference offers and there are studies that the district offers. We just had a gathering of about 40, 41 people yesterday that were studying and holding each other accountable. So there are things available to help us form as disciples. If you just can't stand the district or the conference and you wanted to stay here in Carrollton, you ask your pastor, what are we doing to make sure that we are being formed as disciples? And you can do things like make small group accountability groups and make Bible studies to make sure you're continuing to learn and to form. And if Pastor Drew Carey will not pay attention, <laughs> then you do it yourself. You invite people to sit around your table at your kitchen table and you talk about how is it with your soul? It's so important that we keep forming ourselves as disciples. And then we need to get outside these walls and we need to share the good news. As Drew said, we need to fish for people. We need to focus on the big picture, on what the mission of this church is. That is our calling. That is our main focus. That's what we're supposed <coughs> to be about as a church. Making disciples for Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. That's what it's about. In the name of Jesus the Christ, may it be so. Let us pray. God, we come before you. You're, you're grateful people. We thank you so much for this church and for all that it means to every single one of us. We thank you for the pastor that is here, and we ask you, God, please, to bless him, to give him wisdom, to give him strong leadership, and to protect him from all evil. We pray for this church, this group of believers, and we pray that we would all continue to form as disciples. And that maybe we've gotten a little lazy. Maybe we've decided we've gone far enough, but... We know when we're quiet and we talk with you that there's so much further we could go in our relationship with you. And we pray that, that you will show us ways to do just that. And we also, God, with all our hearts, pray for those two million people in this commonwealth of Kentucky. Help us not to be afraid. Give us courage and give us the words to say to help those people know what we know and to share with those people what we have that you love us so very much that you want us to be with you and to be a church and to be alive and to live life fully we pray that we will share these things that we will make disciples and that the word will truly be transformed in your son's name and all god's children said amen, amen. We close our service today. Lord God, we're just so grateful for everything you do through us and do for us. Lord God, help us 
to reach out in this community. Help others to see your Son through us. Help us to bear his light to the people that are in darkness in this place. Guide us and direct us on the mission you've laid before us. Drive us on the path of righteousness you've made for us. And help care for God this church to grow and to be able to, re to receive your grace and give it to others. Give it the glory for this day. We thank you for Dr. Hawkshurst for her wonderful message to us. We pray, pray for blessings upon her and blessings upon our charge comments that will be in the beginning moments. We pray all these things in Christ's holy name. Amen.